and we're going to keep seeing more of them. Why? Because people say, oh, I've got 12 of these locks and I want to have three more. I should key it all the same. Unfortunately, it's not really good thinking. Inside the locks, you can absolutely prevent that shimming attack. If you're worried about kids with beer cans running around, opening all your power panels, you just get an unshimmable padlock. They're out there. I'm a fan of them. But how often do you see this talked about? So when you buy it as a consumer, if you're not thinking of this, you're never going to say, by the way, is this lock shim proof? Finally, again, this is making its way onto some packaging nowadays. The double ball mechanism, the idea of other types of mechanisms that can't be just popped open. That's a good thing. I'd like to see more of it. You can change the shape of pins and make them a lot harder to pick. As many of you might be able to predict this, just looking at the physics of what's about to happen. If you try to, you know, set this pin, it's called a spool pin. It's going to jam on the edge. It's not going to want to set. There are a number of designs like that. Mushroom pins, serrated pins jam on everything. Now, it's still possible to pick these with enough finesse, with enough real patience and dedication, but it's harder. It's a great step up. It is what makes this lock, you know, pick resistant in my mind. Come on. There we go. You can resist bumping really easily. A simple way of doing that, you know, putting some gaps in the pin stack so the physics of bumping doesn't transfer energy correctly. There's even an anti-bump pin by making one pin less weighty than the other. It will actually mess up the physics of how the pins fly around. Uh, talk to me more in the Q&A if you really want to get into retrofitting and changing your locks. I'll tell you some tips about it. However, please understand that everything I've just shown you in category two, you can still get around it with dedication. This right here, this next step up, is what I really want most of you to try to take away from this talk. There is a difference between pick resistant and what I would call properly high security. There are whole different categories, whole diff it's a whole different animal, but those sort of terms get thrown around a lot because of marketing you know, guys who say, let's put this high security display over here. And you saw it was like you know, commercial grade master locks. Find enough lock if you want to, you know, keep the two-year-old out of the candy, I guess. But it doesn't belong in your server room. What do I consider a proper high security lock? Well, it's something that would entirely change the game. Something that someone who bought the $5 pick set or the $10 pick set online with like three tools in it cannot get into. Something you need specialized tools to attack. Something that needs different training and techniques and different methods beyond just the basics that you can learn like on the internet. Good example of this line of thinking, an old design by the Schlag company called their Everest. Basic pin tumbler lock, but they added this extra little pin in the bottom of the plug, this little what I would call a check pin. And unless you had the right key, the Everest key had a big groove that would reach down and scoop into that, key, that pin, that little pin wouldn't retract and the plug could never turn. So people could sit there trying to pick it all day, trying to set the top pins, top, uh, 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 I can't get it. Well, it's because an entirely different pin was hidden somewhere else. And eventually, of course, a special tool was made. It was a special tensioning you know, tool with a long finger on it. Some people just cut Everest keys and use them as tensioners, very brilliant. But it, it made somebody break out of their comfort zone. If someone waltzed in your building with the basic toolkit that says, I learned how to use this and I'm going to get some locks, would they have, oh shoot, I'm missing a tool, I need a special tool I didn't bring with me, would they need that? Would they need a different technique they have never trained on? That is my definition of high security. Proper high security nowadays, because of, you know, the Everest of course is an older design, you see a lot of sidebar based locks. An entire bar running down the plug that will not fall inward unless other conditions are met. Sometimes it's an entire second row of pins, a whole series of pins, like on this Asa Twin Lock or a Scorpion Lock. Actually, the Scorpion you'll see in a second. The Asa Twin Lock, the idea is it's a whole extra row of pins. You're not going to reach your tools in there and try to set these by the same method. Any people ever have keys for their, uh, maybe their you know, car or something that have a, like a long groove running down the side of it? Have you ever had door keys even with long grooves running down the side? That's usually the sign of what's called a slider mechanism. Same idea. It's small bits of metal, not whole pin stacks, little bits of metal interacting very intricately with a sidebar that has to fall inward. Impossible to pick with just regular tools unless you, know, you have three years to try it, I guess. Maybe you could try. I would not want to. Medico is a very popular lock for some people. If you do any work in the government space, you've probably seen Medico locks around. Again, it's a sidebar-based lock. Theirs, the sidebar actually interacts directly with the bottom pin. The key pin spins into position, allowing fingers on the sidebar to fall inward. If you've ever wondered how that's achieved, it's a pretty neat design, actually. 
The sidebar notch in these key pins is aligned because of these chisel tips. And the actual bidding cuts on a Medeco key are in different directions. I took a Medeco lock apart, shot some video of it, you know, actually of the plug, and you'll sort of see this. It's a neat, it's a neat system. Here are these little dark spots. Those are the actual channel where these fingers from the sidebar would fall in. And you can see as you pull the key out, it randomizes, flips all around. It's a really, really neat design. Now, it's unfortunate that this design has not really changed in the past few decades. Medico had such a cool design that they were able to coast on it. And they never really did much more research. They never really evolved it, except some cosmetic changes to extend the life of their patents and copyrights. Because of that, one dedicated man and his partner have been attacking Medico for a while and now have basically destroyed the lock. Mark Tobias and Tobias Bluesmanis, if you've never heard of this, they have just wrecked Medico. They can bump Medicos, they can pick them reliably, there are decoder tools. Because they are the lightning rod, they were the big name in the industry. They took a lot more heat than many other companies. But also because they kind of were content to sit around and not make a lot of revisions, you know, they're not, the, they're not an unpickable lock anymore. You never want to use that term in general, of course. But they're not the best of the best. Would I still call them high security? Maybe. You know, depending on how badly, you know, someone has all of Mark's training and all of his special tools, you can get in there. But, I mean, it's, it's not going to be the most common thing. Don't freak out if you have a lot of Medico at your facility back home. If it comes time to change your locks out, yeah, maybe you get something new. Rotating disc mechanisms. No picking, no bumping, nothing like that because there are no pin stacks. Some locks just dispensed with pin stacks entirely. Beautiful type of lock that you see more in Europe than here, except maybe on some of Master's old uh, kryptonite, no, not Master, the kryptonite company's bike locks. The rotating disc, it's essentially a safe. It's like a mini safe with wheels that spin. Now, can you attack this? Yes. You can attack it with a specialized tool, with specialized training, and a lot of time. It takes a while to do. Some locks are what I would call, however, completely unpickable. In quotes, unpickable. Uh, what do I reserve these special fourth category of locks? What is the fourth type of lock, the highest grade? Well, in simple terms, it's a lock that has no known attack or bypass that has been published or even theorized yet. It's a very short list, and it's a very you know, finicky lover. If you're on that list, you can get kicked off right away if somebody releases the right paper at Source or Black Hat or who knows where. Currently, if you're curious, the few locks that really are my darlings on that list, one is a Finnish lock from the Abloy company called their Protec. It is essentially a rotating disc lock that has extra countermeasures, which I'll tell you about if you want to ask me later, that frustrate the use of that you know, rotating disc two-in-one tool. Brilliant design. I used to have Medeco on all my stuff. I've replaced it all with Protex in the past. I don't work, by the way, for any of these companies that I you know, praise or any of the companies I trash. Um, they don't give us free stuff. They, they, just, you know, they just are, so I like to remind you of that. I do have friends who sell some of these in Europe, though, and I'm proud to say that they're my friends. They're a very nice product. There are really awesome magnetic locks. Some magnetic locks, I would call, basically no picking, no attack, nothing has been known. Especially the EVA company in Austria has the MCS lock. Unlike some magnet locks, which are just little north-south magnets in an array, the EVA MCS is actually a lock that has each discrete paddle with a north-south zone rotated into different positions. So the inside the plug, you have these little rotors that spin and align all in a row, allowing a sidebar to interact. It's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. And anytime you have magnets, you don't have to have the inner side walls of the plug you know, touching anything. It's just a flat channel because magnetism radiates out through the plug and does its job. There's nothing you can even touch with your tools to spin into position. Really, really neat. One more company, Multilock. They're based out of uh, Israel, I believe. Their latest generation of lock, the MT5. There is no known attack or bypass. I didn't get into much of their stuff because some of their older generation locks have been picked and bumped. But the, if you're using a multi-lock system, many uh, North American locksmiths have contracts with multi-lock more than Eva and Abloy. And if you see, oh, we've had multi-lock for the longest time, ask them if they can upgrade you to the MT5 and you'll be in that unpickable category if you want. If you're worried about your safes, don't be too worried about your safes. Well, maybe be kind of worried about your safe if you didn't pay a lot for it. Safes tend to be a little better. Some safes, you know, can be manipulated open. Ask us in the village if we want to teach you about safe cracking. You know, I'm sorry we couldn't bring a bunch of safes with us, but we'll, we, could give, we could give you a lot of fun information about it. There are manipulation-proof safes that are just out there. How do they work? Ask me during the Q&A. I hope I'm not breezing too fast. I want to give you all the material. I don't want to run long. And then since we're